All right, so ladies and gentlemen, if I was going to say, hey, graph this, we're only going to do a couple examples, all right, on for your homework and for a test. But let's say I ask you, you know, what does this graph look like? You need to have an idea. And obviously, yes, you can go and plug it into your graphing calculator. But what if you don't have a graphing calculator? And what if you're on a test and they're just asking something where they want you to know the shape? We talked about you can always apply table of values, right? Always. But table of values kind of takes a little bit of time, doesn't it? It's a good way to understand it, but it takes a little time. So what we're going to use is we're going to use our transformations to help us graph this problem. All right? So here's what I got. Remember, I told you guys the general transformation form we had was a times 1 over x minus h plus k. All right? And remember, when going back to transformations, a tells us if there's going to be a reflection, right? And if we're going to have a stretch or a compression. And our h shifts it left and right, and k shifts it up and down. So before we do our transformations, the only way you're going to be able to know how to do transformations is you first have to know what the parent graph looks like. right? You can't graph something by using its transformations if you don't know what to transform it from. So that's why you have to know the parent graph. And that's why I went through that parent graph with you guys. All right. So now we know what the parent graph is. But remember, this parent graph has asymptotes. Where the, where the graph approaches. Now, I like using the asymptotes to help me with my transformations. The reason being is this hyperbola, as we call it, is kind of difficult, right, to kind of shift around. It's like, how, what is the shape of this thing? But what, yeah, that's the name of it. But what we do know about the hyperbola, which is cool, is that the hyperbola approaches its asymptotes. So if I look at this graph, ladies and gentlemen, and I look at my transformations, No. So I look at my transformations. And what I notice is, if I have x minus h, here I have x plus 1. That tells me I'm going to shift my graph where? Over right. Remember, it's opposite of h. h tells you to go left or right, so it's left 1, right? Well, rather than trying to shift the hyperbolas, let's shift our asymptote, right? Because if our, if our graph is going to shift to left, that means I'm now going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. Why are they called that? Yeah, I'm not either. Yeah. I'm just going to try to finish this up, OK? And then we'll go through some points. So the next thing is um, now we look at the minus 4. Minus 4 tells you to shift the graph down 4, right? So I'm going to go down 4 units, 1, 2, 3, 4. And now. Your asymptotes we represent as dotted lines. Okay? Those are going to be the lines that your graph is going to approach. All right? Now we need to go back and now we look at our a, right? I'm multiplying a because a times 1 is a. So you, so you guys can see that my a is equal to negative 3. So when it's negative, that tells you what's going to happen. When it's negative, that means it's going to reflect over the x axis. So what that means is now this graph is being reflected over the x-axis, right? So I'm going to have something that's going to look like that and like that. Rather than it looking taking this shape, it's now being reflected over the axis. Now, we don't know what this exact values are going to be. So ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to have to do for your test all right, is to kind of show me that you know at least some values. I'm happy that some of you have a graphing calculator where you can graph it and get the and get the idea of what the graph looks like. That's awesome. However, just by plotting what the graph looks like is not going to be able to get you the credit. What you're going to have to do is show me a couple points, and I'll explain this. If you guys remember, when you guys took your test on quadratics, what I asked you to do was to find the axis of symmetry and then pick two points to the left and to the right. I said don't go very far from the axis of symmetry because the quadratic gets very large or very small very quickly, right? So you wanted to pick points that were very close to the vertex or, or the axis of symmetry. The same thing is going to be the case for my asymptotes. Don't pick numbers that are very far away from your vertical asymptote. So we know my vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 1. So when I do my table of values, I'm going to do two points to the left of the vertical asymptote and two points to the right. So since x is equal to negative 2, I'll do negative 2 
and negative 3. And then I'll do 0 and 1. Yes. If it was x minus 1, I'd shift my graph to the right, and the asymptote would be positive. OK? It would be in the positive x value. Yes? Um, the parent graph, is it the only one I can ever intersect at 0? Yeah. So this is just the parent. At the parent graph, we can't intersect at 0. And I'll explain a little bit once we get to our points, OK? So now let's evaluate for our points. So I do f of negative 2. You plug negative 2 in for x, right? So we have negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 3 divided by negative 1 is 3. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Now let's do negative 3. So I'll do f of negative 3 equals negative 3 divided by negative 3 plus 1. Well, negative 3 divided, or negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Negative 3 divided by negative 2 is a positive 3 halves minus 4 is going to be 2.5. Oh, minus 2.5. Yes? No? Roughly, I'm just keeping a decimal to keep it up there. Um, now, let's go and look at f of 0. Now, some of you might say, well, Mr. McLogan, you said x cannot equal 0. And that's true when we had our parent graph or when we have a function where 0 cannot be on the bottom. But if I plug in 0 for the, my x, do I have 0 as the denominator? No. I don't have 0 as the denominator. Because 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 divided by negative 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 divided by negative 4 is negative 7. Okay. Now we look at f of 1. F of 1, I just take um, negative 3 divided by 1 plus 1 minus 4. And then here, I'm going to have 2. So this one equals negative 3 halves minus 4, which will be a negative 5.5. And I'll just get out of the fraction, do the decimals to help you guys out as far as graphing goes. So now, let's plot our four points. Oh, sorry, let's write these down there. So this is negative 2.5. This is 0 is negative 7. And at 1, we have negative 5.5. So let's plot the points. Negative 2, negative 1. At negative 3, we have negative 2.5. Let's go and take a look at 0. At 0, I have negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And at, ne at 1, I have negative 5.5. 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what you guys can see is the actual shape. So remember, they have to, the graph has to go through these two points and then approach each asymptote. So the actual shape of the graph is going to look like that. Yes? OK. So remember, here's my asymptotes where right now at x equals 0 and x equals y, right? Or 0 equals x and 0 equals y. Since I shifted it horizontally to the left, I just moved the asymptote over to the left. And then since I shifted it down 4, I just moved the vertical or the horizontal asymptote down 4. All right? The other important thing for you guys to notice about this is does this make sense for a horizontal asymptote to be at negative, at negative 1? What happens when I put negative 1 in for x? You get 0, right? Which we know is undefined. So that's why we know this vertical asymptote is undefined. OK? That's it. Sorry for those of you that had trouble paying attention.